I ended up living in a house worth just over 980,000. So for those of you that don't know, I worked at a mid-market private equity company in London for just over a year as part of my placement year. So I go to Loughborough University and I study finance and management. And my placement year was in London at a private equity company. And I was a junior research analyst. And because I live so far away from London, I had to find a place to live there. And I'm sure you're aware if you're a placement student or looking at moving to London for your placement year, it is extremely expensive to live there and finding a house is just as difficult. So I ended up living in a house worth just over 980,000 and here's the house. It's not that big so it was a semi-detached house. We had two houses next to each other. It was a four bed house and it was on three levels. So as you first walk in you had the bathroom on the right hand side and you had someone's bedroom on the bottom floor. You walk up the stairs, you've got a balcony, you've got the kitchen, which is a little bit dated, but it did the job. We didn't really spend much time in it because we were working such long hours. We were working, oh, I was personally working nine till six. My flatmates, some of them were working much later as well. So we didn't spend too much time in the kitchen. And you can see on the middle floor, there's actually a really large room. And this was originally a living room and it was converted to a bedroom so that more of us could stay in the house so we could split the cost. And then as you go to the top floor, you have another balcony and you're presented with my bedroom or uh, the first door. Then you walk down, there's another bedroom, which was quite a large one. This one had an ensuite. And then there is a bathroom. And this is the bathroom which I shared with the person who was on the middle floor. So generally this house wasn't that bad, but it was located quite far out of where I work. So this was in zone two. It was located in Canada Water and it was right next to or right opposite Canary Wharf. So it was right next to Greenland Docks. So because it was zone two, it was quite a commute to work for me. It was about 35 to 40 minutes which is the standard but there was about a 20 minute walk or a 15 minute walk to the tube station and then I got on the tube I got on the Jubilee all the way to work in the city of London and here was my bedroom so it is quite small there was just enough room for my bed a desk to the right hand side and then I had a decent sized wardrobe and then a couple of cabinets. So it's not the biggest room in the world, but to live in a 980,000 pound house, I was only paying 775 pounds per month. This is obviously excluding bills. So when bills was added on top of this, it was working out around 40 to 50 pounds extra a month. And when I say bills, this included utility bills. So water, gas, electricity. This was also including Wi-Fi and all of those things added up. So in total each month, I was probably spending around 825, maybe 830, 840 in winter, so in December and January sort of time. And the reason this was so cheap was because my house, we had a total of four people living in there. And because some of the rooms were a lot larger than the other ones, the two people who had the two larger rooms were spending a little bit more money each month. And the two smaller rooms, and I was living in one of the smaller rooms, they were a lot cheaper. And as a result, that's how I managed to live in a 980,000 pound house for just over a year in London. Now, this was a really good deal and my salary managed to cover most of the rent and the bills and still had a good amount of money to be living. If you wanna check out how much money I made, please tap on this video. I go into depth on how much um, I was making, how much I was spending from my private equity salary as a placement student. But you're probably thinking, how on earth did I manage to find a property like this? And how did I manage to find flatmates to live with to be able to split the cost and to be able to afford to live in London? So in terms of my flatmates at Loughborough University, my course is finance. And there's quite a lot of people who move down to London and go and live down in London because there are so many finance roles. So it was pretty easy for me one of my mates from university, he was going to be living in London and he was working for a consulting company and someone else who he knew was going to be working in one of the investment banks. So instantly that was an extra two people and then we managed to find a third who lived in the bigger room. Now, in terms of the house, the house was quite difficult to find, but we used a platform called Spare Rooms and spare rooms is brilliant because it has such an easy search function to be able to find rooms and um, you can quite easily negotiate a price as well. So if you're a placement student, I'd highly recommend using spare rooms. And I'll quickly walk through how I managed to find such a property. Spare rooms, we'll click on here, find a house together. So if I was just to type in London, for example, um, let's go zone one to zone two because it's slightly cheaper and let's click search. 
So straight away you can see 990 pounds is quite a lot. And this is when you can use the search functions on the left hand side. So if we see rent here monthly, let's say we want a maximum of 850 and we want to get rid of all the, all the rubbishy houses, so 600. So let's apply filters to this and hopefully we find some good houses. There is just a bunch of properties, a bunch of people's spare rooms. So a double room in large house in Finsbury Park. Click on this. You can flick through the pictures. Admittedly, this one doesn't look amazing, but it is still a house to live in and at an extremely cheap price. You can also re read through these things. So you've got the extra costs. You know that it's furnished, it's shared, and the current household is between 28 to 53. So it really does give you so much information about the property. And that's what I loved about using Spare Room. Also, just to mention, this is not a sponsored video. Spare Room did not sponsor me in any way, but this is just what I use to find my placement year. Now, I hope you found this really insightful and I hope it helps you find a place to live for your placement year. This doesn't just have to be applied to London. It can be used for multiple different roles. It can be used for anywhere north of London and Milton Keynes sorts of areas. So I'll just generally, if you're a placement student and you're wanting to find a place, just use spare rooms. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please watch all my other videos on placement years and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.